I'd like to call the January 2014 meeting of the Haywood County Board of Education to order. I want to ask that uh, Mr. Rogers lead us in our invocation, immediately followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone, please rise. Let us pray. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that you've given us a new year, a new fresh year to start. Lord, we know that uh, we've had a good half a year in school this year. We thank you for the accomplishments these children have made in their academics and their sports. And Lord, we pray that you be with each and every one of them as they go through this time of testing and getting ready for a new semester. And Lord, we pray that you give them strength and abilities to do the best they can. And Lord, we pray that you guidance upon our teachers and our staff as they continually find ways to teach children and to, to help educate the children of this county so that we can be the best that they can be. Lord, grant us the wisdom and the ability to do everything that's in thy will. We pray that you guide us and direct us in every day that we walk with you. Keep our schools safe, keep our children safe, and bless our families and their children. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Under announcements, I'd just like to announce that the uh, next board meeting will be held uh, February the 10th at 7 o'clock here at the uh, Education Center. Uh, board members, uh, I'm sure you're already aware of this, but the Altrusa Soup Fundraiser for Haywood County Schools Foundation will be held January 28th from 11 a.m. till 6 p.m. at First United Methodist Church. And uh, I want to thank all the board members. Each individual board member has already contributed, and we as a board are going to help sponsor the uh, Altrusa uh, Soup Fundraiser. So, Jenny, thank you for the opportunity for us to serve the Haywood County Schools Foundation and help support Altrusa. If you couldn't hear it, uh, it was the Altrusa as of, you want to bring it up, come up and say it in the microphone, please, Miss Wood, <laughs> so the people that listen at home can, or on the internet can hear it. As of May 2013, Altrusa had provided over $133,000 in scholarships by money raised for the annual soup and cornbread. That is wonderful. Thank you for the update on that. And thank them as well. Thank you. <laughs> Board members, don't forget the Mardi Gras Ball that's coming up. It is the event in Haywood County. It's coming up uh, March 1st, Saturday at 6.30 p.m. up at Law Ridge Country Club. Be there or be square is what I say. It's a lot of fun. If you've never been, you need to go. I promise we'll turn the cameras the other direction <laughs> most of the time. Uh, no? <laughs> okay. Under agenda adjustments, I'd like to add one item from the Building and Grounds Committee. Mr. Leatherwood has asked that we add one item. We'll add that uh, between item 15 and 16 on our agenda without objection. Okay, it will be placed on the agenda at that time frame. If I miss it, please speak up and I'll go back to it, Mr. Leatherwood. <laughs> Any other adjustments? Okay, at this time we'll recognize Mr. Jason Hines for some special recognitions. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Garrett, it's my pleasure tonight to recognize two teachers from Haywood County who have attained the highest certification possible in the profession. National Board Certification is a voluntary assessment program designed to develop, retain, and recognize accomplished teachers and to embed ongoing improvement in schools nationwide. While state teacher credentialing programs set the basic requirements to teach in each state, 
National, national board certified teachers must demonstrate advanced teaching knowledge, skills, and practices. Completion of national board certification signifies that teachers have developed and demonstrated the skills required of an accomplished education professional. So it's my pleasure tonight to recognize Bonnie Coleman from Waynesville Middle School. Each teacher receives a medallion that they can wear uh, to graduation ceremonies, that sort of thing that recognizes them as National Board certified. They receive a plaque uh, that their school can post in their office for parents and the public to see. And we also <laughs> provide them with two gifts to uh, frame their certificates with. So we're proud to present those things. The second teacher is Darcy Fox. <coughs> Thank you. Congratulations to both of our <laughs> National Board Certified Teachers. Now we'd like to recognize Miss Jeannie Wood for some special recognition. Chairman Francis, members of the board, Dr. Garrett and Dr. Nolte, it is my pleasure to recognize students from Waynesville Middle School, Canton Middle School, Jonathan Valley, Junaluska, and Central for their participation in the North Carolina Honors Chorus. The process to be selected as a member of the Honors Chorus requires numerous steps. Middle school students were required to learn a high level song with their teacher at the beginning of the year. Then the students travel to Hickory in September to audition. Each student sings a song individually for a judge. Students are also given a musical example that they've never seen before to sing on the spot. Around 1,000 students auditioned across the state and about 150 are chosen. 10 middle school students from Haley County. Middle school student honors course students traveled to Winston-Salem in November to perform a concert as part of the North Carolina Music Educators Annual Conference. Elementary school students record a song on a CD and the recordings are sent to be judged. Over 800 students auditioned and also around 150 were selected and five from Haywood County. I would like to recognize <coughs> Liam Matthews from Waynesville Middle, Cade Leslie from Waynesville Middle, Tyler Messer from Wendell Middle. <laughs> Gray Sexton from Wendell Middle. <laughs> Noah Hall from Wendell Middle School. <laughs> Parker Montgomery from Wendell Middle School. Emma Clark from Waynesville Middle School. <laughs> Emma Winburn from Waynesville Middle School. <laughs> Lisa Cates from Waynesville Middle School. <laughs> Ashley Goolsby from Canton Middle School. Laurel Crosby from Jonathan Valley. <laughs> Haley Gombert from Jonathan Valley. 
Ben Patton from Junaluska. AJ Flo from Junaluska. And Ryan McClure from Central Elementary. I would also like to recognize the teachers that help these students in the Connors course. Dr. Jana Brindle from Waynesville Middle. James Markey from Canton Middle. Paula Nichols from Jonathan Valley and June Alaska. And Martha Brown from Central. Congratulations. It is with great pleasure and pride that I recognize the North Carolina, 2013 North Carolina Music Education Association Middle School Choral Section Teacher of the Year Award to Dr. Jana Brindle. <laughs> Dr. Brindle is a native of Western North Carolina and has been the choral director at Waynesville Middle School for the past eight years. At Waynesville Middle, Dr. Brindle teaches 6th, 7th, and 8th grade vocal mu music, world drumming, and leads the Waynesville Middle School Vocal Ensemble. She holds degrees in music education from Mars Hill, East Carolina University, and Florida State University. Dr. Brindle taught choral music education classes at East Carolina for 13 years before returning to the public school classroom. She began her teaching career as a K-6 music specialist in Buncombe County. Dr. Brindle was named the Haywood County Schools Teacher of the Year in 2009. Her principal, Mr. Putnam, says of her, Dr. Brindle is the epitome of what an educator should be. She maintains the highest levels of expectations for herself and her students. Dr. Brindle is a dedicated, caring professional that is adored by her students. The Waynesville Middle School Choral Department is second to none and Dr. Brindle is the most deserve, is most deserving of this prestigious award that has been bestowed upon her. Dr. Brindle received this honor in November at the North Carolina Music Association Music Education Association Conference in Winston Salem. We are very honored and lucky to have Dr. Brindle in our system. Congratulations, Dr. Brindle. Congratulations. This is the point in time in the meeting when we have the mass exodus. So. <laughs> Thank you, students and parents, for coming to the Board of Education meeting, and congratulations on your achievements.
We have had three individuals sign up to speak to the board in open session. Uh, now is the time period designated by the Board of Education for public comments. This time is set aside for comments from the general public in regard to matters of concern to the public. However, comments addressing specific students and or personnel are prohibited due to confidentiality laws and regulations. Comments are limited to three minutes. The board requests that all speakers adhere to the time limitation and prohibition against mentioning individual students and personnel. First of all, we have Ms. Renee Steele. Happy New Year, Happy New Mr. Year. Francis and Board, Dr. Nolte, Dr. Garrett. Um, tonight, I just want to bring up again, I had spoken in October about communication and the need for increased communication. Um, and while the articles, you know, have been in the local paper about um, block schedule, and I think that's great, I think um, we still need a community forum um, just for more dialogue for question and answer times for, for community members. And also, I just thought perhaps we could use the Alert Now messaging system to direct parents to the Haywood County Schools website and to the Facebook page because there's information there that uh, people, some people don't even know that there's a school board. And, and that is the truth. <laughs> some people really don't know that. So it'd be nice if they would, could go to the Facebook page or to the website and get updated information. And also, I noticed as I was perusing the um, Haywood County Schools website that there are no email addresses for board members, no email addresses that I could find for um, even for the department heads and central office. So I, I think that could we could improve some communication there as well. I had to call a school board member to get uh, addresses for the school board. So I just thought those are some things that could make communication a little bit easier and um, bring us up to speed in um, this day of t high technology that we have. Correct. So thank you. I appreciate your uh, email earlier uh, that I received today, and uh, thank you very much for your comments. And uh, I'll check that out on the web page. I think there's a place that they're there, but I'm not 100% sure. It wasn't very easy. If they're there, I it understand. wasn't very easy, and I looked four times or five times. Even today before I brought this up, I said, let me look again. So we'll definitely take a look at it. Thank you very much. Next, we have uh, Ms. Tia Lambert. The board recognizes Tia Lambert. Okay, I just want to preface this with um, I'm here speaking for a group of parents um, in the community, and don't please don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to preface that. <laughs> um, Mr. Francis, school board members, Dr. Garrett and Dr. Nolte. In April of 2013, teachers and staff were given the opportunity to provide feedback to the respective school administrators and school leaders via an opinion survey. The survey was created without charge to the school system. Although an internal memo was released to staff with a general summary, the specific results were never released to school employees or to the general public. Understandably, this information was probably deemed confidential. Last month, Dr. Nolte presented the results of Haywood County School test scores and our state ranking as compared to other schools <coughs> and school systems across North Carolina. This can be viewed in full on um, the www.youtube.com under Haywood County Schools Board Meeting. There were standouts, but some of our schools did not perform as expected. It was suggested last, at last month's meeting that our test results may or may not be the result of socioeconomic status within our community. Our community members feel it may be something much more simple. We feel it may be directly related to the individual leadership of each school. It seems a fair question to ask, how do the principal approval ratings correlate to the individual school test results? Any school leader knows that the school culture and environment directly affects test scores. Just like any private or corporate business, the manner in which employees are treated, respected, and included in decision making directly influences the end product. If an employee does not feel safe in his or her environment, their performance will be directly affected. We are asking the board to release the results of the survey so our community members have an opportunity to decide for themselves. 
We are not asking for specific results which may infringe upon specific individual confidentiality, but we are asking for mean scores in all areas surveyed. Although we don't feel it was intentional, the perception was that our rural community and our Title I standing was being used as an excuse for lower than expected test scores. We feel that if our community's socioeconomic standing is being presented as a cause effect for low performance at some schools, then all the information should be out in the open and made available to the community. In closing, school administrators are public employees and are accountable for their performance, whether good or bad, and should not hide or hide behind or be protected by protocol. We should own it, learn from it, and move forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Lambert. We'll take your comments under advisement. And I appreciate the uh, email I received from you today with some good suggestions, and we'll take a look at those also. Thank you. Next, the board recognizes Mike Patton. take more than three minutes of your time. Okay. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak tonight. Thank you very much. My name is Mike Patton. I have uh, three kids in the Haywood County School System, one in high school, one in middle school, and one in elementary school. So my morning commute and evening commute, as you can imagine, is complicated. <laughs> um, I think what I wanted to speak with you tonight is uh, kind of ties in with what Tia was talking about. It, it, it's, it, it's service. It's public service. It's when I go to a school, how am I treated? And I'm not talking about security. Everybody understands security. You've got to have that these days. Um, I would like to relate to you a quick story that happened at one of the schools. No specifics, no names, I promise. Um, I went to pick up my child's report card. <clears throat> and unbeknownst to me, you had to pay whatever fees were necessary. I owed a dollar in library fees. I had 35 cents. Um, I made a joke about, hey, let's look at the report card and just give it back and save the 65 cents. The lady handing out the report cards jerked it out of my son's hand and started to file it back in the file, meanwhile berating me for whatever reason. Maybe she had had a bad day. And anyway, it, it was bad enough to where the lady sitting next to her, a younger lady, reached in her own pocket and took out a dollar and said, here, 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 here's a dollar. So I don't think it was all me. I think that I was treated unfairly. And in the meantime, I got rather upset and ended up having to sit in a principal's office, <laughs> which maybe I should have. But it, the, let me cut to the chase. I later called the school to find out, to call the principal to find out what was going to be done. I left a voicemail with the person that I, the principal, um, not, you know, I never received any call back. I left my name, my phone number. This, he, he had witnessed some of the situation. I was told that I was out of hand, but that the woman that had spoke to me like I was just common street trash was not out of hand. And so I think what I want to, what I want to say is this. I work for the state too. I work for the DOT. We, in the last year, since, especially since the change in administrations, we are all about customer service, whether we like it or not. <laughs> and I think that it would be helpful if at some point, and I think it would start here, that customer service become important to where that when a parent or anybody walks into a school, that they feel like they're getting treated with respect and that they're not getting treated like a seventh grader or a sixth grader. And, and that, um, that, that it all begins there. And that's all I want to say. I'm out of time. My timer's dead, too. And thank you very much. I could go on and on. Thank you. Mr. Patton, thank you for your comments. And on behalf of the board, we apologize for any uh, I don't think that action that serious, was taken by the school system towards you personally. Anyone else? We signed up. Okay. 
Board members, you've had an opportunity to look at the December 10th, 2013 closing regular session minutes. At this time, I'd entertain a motion to be approved. Just present. Move. We have a, a motion on the floor from Mr. Kirkpatrick. Second. Second, Ms. Milner. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Next on our agenda, we have Ms. Jenny Wood with a Haywood County Schools calendar update. Okay, I think that you guys have the calendar there that you can look at. And basically, we just had a few changes because of the, um, the snow days. Our last day is now June the 9th. That's our 180th day. We had some floating work days that moved two days. And we also had an early dismissal day that was scheduled in February. It was uh, it was scheduled February the 27th, and then the 28th was a work day. And because they all that the days moved, the early release day was taken away. And that's that's the right. only changes. Board members have any questions about the calendar? I mean, it's been revised because of the snow days that we've had, or the, or the cold Brook days. And the early college has also been revised. Okay. They're on there. Mr. Chair, I don't have any about the, the holidays or the calendar. Appreciate the hard work everybody does. Again, this past week when we had the bad weather, we had some circumstances that we had to go against some policies. And again, let everybody know we were called and asked our thing. I'd like maybe to let that committee look back at that again for special circumstances to say, to give her the authority about having to make that rash decision because, again, due to testing, that would have been a bad day to go to school. Mm -hmm. I, I think a, a, that, you know, that was addressed at one time before, but I think the precedent was, it's been set several years back um, to, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday even, it was pretty much automatic Saturday, and we had, we sent out several surveys and we got different, you know, opinions back and forth on whether we should go to Saturday school or not go to Saturday school. And, you know, one of the, the small steps we took was to allow Wednesdays to be at the discretion of the superintendent. And, you know, I think that the calendar committee could definitely look back and see that under certain circumstances um, that arise that, you know, any day would be under the discretion whether the superintendent would want to. to you know, just up. again. And that was just a smart call. I mean, yeah, I agree. I mean, my daughter did not want to go to school half day through testing. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, that was she said that's just a bad day. So, so again, I, I just good. let people know that who are watching the policy that it was she did call and ask every board member about that. So, it was the right decision to yes. make, really. Yes, if we need to put that in writing somewhere, we need to do that. <laughs> yeah. Next time, I guess the calendar committee could. I can I can include stuff. that under the inclement weather plan, yes. and just make a revision, yeah. and update the the calendar. Probably have to be approved on if you. Approve right. Her. Yeah. Discretionary. Okay. To make make to all make Saturday. To make Saturday. Well, what we need to do is if somebody wants to make a motion, we can take action okay. on this right now if you okay. want well, to. I'll make a motion at this point in time, uh, since I am I do sit on the calendar committee, to allow the superintendent to have discretion when we do miss on a Monday, Tuesday. Um, if it if it so fits the, the, the schedule, we can make it up on Saturday, but for whatever reason, especially like this, what just happened, if uh, it does not fit the schedule, that she has the discretion not to call Saturday school. I'll second that motion. Okay. To me, I th to, I to word that, I just say the superintendent <laughs> discretion, maybe. <laughs> Would that be okay? Because that way you take all the parameters out of it and just, yeah. I'm sure she's going to make sure that it would be in compliance with what the board's wishes were. Is that okay with you yeah, if we they, just word it dis the yeah, discretion of the superintendent? Okay. You have a second from Mr. Morris. Uh, any questions or discussion on motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. So now, Dr. Garrett, you know what to do if we have those special situations. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay. 
Board recognizes Mr. Todd Trantham. Mr. Chairman, if you'll turn your attention to items number 12 and 13 on the agenda. Item number 12 is a memorandum of agreement between the Department of Public Instruction and Haywood County Schools. It is a part of uh, the necessary paperwork we have to fill out every three years. What this, what this memorandum of, of understanding does is it commits us to a couple of things with DPI and it commits them to a couple of things. And in, in, in essence, just to make this really simple and take all the lawyers speak out of it, um, they're going to give us connectivity and they're going to guarantee that with that connectivity comes a direct link to those state services that we use regularly. And in exchange, we agree to continue to support and update our technology and we agree that, that the state connectivity funds that they give us, which are in PRC 73, we use to upgrade our network with those and don't use those for other things. So that is the basis behind this memorandum of understanding. Um, it will run from four, 2014 through 2017, so three school years. Um, and it's part of the necessary paperwork so that they can uh, claim E-rate funding against this and get some reimbursement back from the federal government. Okay. We need a motion to approve this uh, memorandum of understanding. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Rogers has made a motion. I'll second. Second, Ms. <laughs> Shandival. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. You have the next item also. Item number 13 on the agenda, Mr. Chairman, is the Haywood County Schools Technology Plan. Um, part of our requirement with, with some of the funding we get from DPI is to maintain a state technology plan that is approved by both you and by the Department of Public Instruction. It is a two-year plan, and so every, every second year we bring a plan to you. This plan will run for the 14-15 uh, and 15-16 school years. Uh, you've had a copy of the plan. I bring that tonight for your approval. Okay. You want to have any questions for Mr. Trantham or comments? I move. All right, move approval of the plan. Do I hear a second? Second. Second with Mr. Rogers. Any comments, questions? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Trantham, for your hard work and on these plans. Pretty detailed. <laughs> Mr. Smathers, I believe the next item is for you on this THS fitness room contract. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. This is a maintenance <coughs> contract for Tuscola High School from Wellness Solutions. I reviewed the contract. I would make the following recommendation that we enter into the contract subject to paragraphs B and C with paragraph 7 being stricken from the contract. Those two contracts essentially tr say to limit the liability of uh, Wellness Solutions and then s uh, paragraph C says that we will be liable for everything. And I suggest that both those items be stricken. Subject to those items, uh, the contract's fine, in my okay. opinion. Okay, at this time I'll entertain a motion that this uh, contract be approved with uh, the recommendation of our school attorney. So moved. Mr. Ledwood's made the motion. Do I hear a second? Second. So Mr. Henson, any questions or discussion on the motion? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smathers. Thank you. <coughs> Board members, next on your agenda, you have uh, a resolution that we can choose to participate in if the board chooses to do so. I've received some updated information today uh, concerning the uh, filing of the resolution against uh, vouchers as presented in the uh, or as uh, legislated in this past legislative uh, action. Uh, I was advised that uh, if we uh, take action tonight, it will be included in the uh, lawsuit. If we do not take action tonight, then, which was in the original letter that came out on December the 16th from Dr. Dunlap, North Carolina School Board Association, it says that. Um, we welcome resolutions passed throughout the month of January, although boards that vote after January 15th will have to be added at a later date. 
So if we want to be included in the initial uh, litigation, we need to do something tonight. If we don't, then we'll be, could be added on later if this board decides to participate. So I just wanted to make that clarification. Uh, the resolution um, is basically was voted on by the North Carolina School Board uh, Association's Board of Directors. Uh, you uh, included in your packet was the, uh, I don't know if it was included in the original information, but you should have received an email from the School Board's Association back in December outlining what this litigation was about. Um, basically, in a nutshell, can you click on the resolution my computer went down? <laughs> what I wanted to point out in here is the budget bill provides in the initial year $10 million to provide school vouchers, which comes not from new monies but from the existing uh, public general school fund which means that we will be reduced of available money by $10 million this year. In subsequent year, it moves up to $50 million. I don't have a real problem with uh, some of the issues in this bill, but the problem I have is, is if there's $50 million going to come out of the general school fund, which is not going to be replaced uh, somewhere else to us, I look at it as we're getting ready to lose about a half a million dollars in a few years. And uh, that's where I have a real problem, is if they want to do vouchers in Raleigh, that's fine, but I think that they need to fund it separate from taking it out of our budget. And uh, that's one thing that I have an issue with on uh, the budget, and that's the reason I would recommend that we do join in the litigation to save funding for our schools. We've all sat here for many months finding dollars, every single dollar we can find for I mean, we found $7,000 in child nutrition the other day, and it was a joyous occasion. We're trying to find every penny. And uh, we're getting ready to lose a half a million dollars. And uh, I don't think it's fair. I mean, if, if it was additional funding, it's a different story. But uh, anyway, we have an opportunity to join in the initial litigation. It's already been filed uh, by, I think it was four systems have already joined in the litigation. I think Buncombe County was one of them. No, the citizens of Buncombe County. Yeah, citizens. Yeah, Buncombe County didn't vote on it. Okay, Buncombe. Citizens. Oh, individual plaintiffs, excuse me, from Buncombe, Hertford, and Rockingham counties filed lawsuit challenging the constitutionality of it. Anyway, um, they have asked if we would uh, join in the support of this uh, resolution against the voucher uh, legislation. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that it be approved. Or whatever action you want to take. If you don't, that's fine. Whatever you want to do. No action will be taken. Next on our agenda, we have Mr. Leatherwood from Building and Grounds. Mr. Chairman, the Building and Grounds met and Tracy's wanting to do two roof jobs this summer, so he needs to get the approval now so he can get ready for it. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> so uh, the first one is uh, I'd like to do this in, in two separate motions. Uh, the first uh, project is at uh, Canton Middle School, and the price tag on that's $126,500. I'd like to make that in the form of a motion from the bill on the grounds that we give him the okay to go ahead with this. Okay, we have a motion from the Building and Grants from Mr. Leatherwood uh, to approve the contract and uh, hear a second. I'll second it. Second, Ms. Shandival. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. The second job is at uh, Wayneville Middle School. It's uh, Bowles Building, and the price tag on that uh, project is $168,000, and I'd like to make that in a more of a motion that we give him the okay to do this. Okay. Second. We have a motion from uh, Mr. Leatherwood to okay the contract and second from Mr. Rogers. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Anything else from Bill? That's it, Mr. Chairman. 
Thank you very much for your hard work on the Building and Grounds Committee, and thank you, Mr. Tracy, for what you all do. And good luck with the project. May they come in under. <laughs> 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 you never know. <laughs> Next on our agenda, we have uh, Mr. Mark Shepard with some policies. Mr. Chairman and members of the board, um, first of all, we have a couple of policies to bring before you for second reading. And the first one is SA1, Student Conduct and Discipline. And uh, the biggest change on that one was just uh, emboldening some words to make them uh, more clear and easy to find in a very long and uh, comprehensive policy. And also uh, uh, just copying and pasting basically a paragraph about uh, what happens to a student who does bring a weapon onto school grounds uh, from page 11 and moving it back up here onto page 9 where it sort of makes more sense in the violations of weapons policy right. section of the policy. Uh, it is a very long and comprehensive policy and sometimes it's hard to dig out the information. We're just trying to clarify the policy. Do I hear a motion that we approve SA1? I move we approve SA1. Ms. Milner's uh, made a motion to Approve SA-1. I'll second the motion. Second by Mr. Francis. Any questions or discussion on the motion? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, next we also have um, policy A-9, computer networks, acceptable use for uh, second reading. The change on it, this uh, centered around bringing it back up to date, uh, removing uh, an out-of-date term about diskettes for storage devices and also removing the terminology NCYs, uh, you know, our outdated student information system, replacing it with just a generic student information system that maybe the policy won't have to be changed again when power <laughs> school goes away. And uh, also just clarifying another sentence uh, and, and replacing it with North Carolina DPI policy. Okay. This time we entertain a motion to approve A-9 as presented. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Rogers made the motion. I hear a second. 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 So Mr. Henson, I believe you beat you just a little bit. <laughs> it's because he's closer. <laughs> we have a motion and a second on the floor to approve A-9. Uh, any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? I'm not going to all my old diskettes now. <laughs> <laughs> They've gone the way of the disco records. <laughs> you can burn them. <laughs> no, you can't. That's an EPA violation. <laughs> Any other questions or comments on the motion? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. And I think we had one other that we needed to Yeah, we have just a little bit different request here. It's board policy C4, which is report cards, progress reports, and student assessment. And of course, the way that we um, report and, and uh, print report cards is dependent upon the technology that we use to do that with. And uh, we have switched from uh, NCYs to power school and it limits us right now on what we can do and um, as we approach the first term as far as full term a semester goes uh, we would be out of compliance with what the policy says we would be doing uh, under the current policy um, basically what we've been doing is uh, reporting the the terms as far as six weeks and nine weeks grades as a, an average a numerical average and at the end of the semester reporting as a letter grade and also having that letter grade appear on the uh, transcript. We cannot do a crossover like that in the new power school yet. We hope, we hope in the future that that capability will be there. It is designed in, just not functioning yet. Uh, and so what we're faced with is a choice to either decide to put all letter grades from the beginning of the year, you know, end of term, end of year, all grades be in letters or in numbers. And uh, with speaking to, uh, you know, principals, data managers, uh, central office staff, and uh, we, we decided that numerical would be overall the best way to go. And it was also decided that uh, keeping consistency between schools as far as, you know, both ends of the county and middle schools and high schools, you know, reporting the same way, at least at this point in time, would be uh, in everybody's best interest for clarity. So I guess what we're asking is uh, you, you have a choice. Either we're going to be out of compliance when we report report cards uh, in, a, in a week or so after the first term is finished, or 
we can waive the 30 days to waive this uh, to table this policy and go ahead and pass it uh, as I presented it to you and uh, then we would be in compliance okay and there is a codicil in that we can suspend the rules in cases of emergency uh, it's just up to this board to decide where they want to pursue that. At this time, I'd entertain a motion if someone would like to move down yes, that path. Mr. Chairman, do we need to yes. do two motions to suspend yes. the rules yeah. first? Yes. And then yeah. approve it? Okay. You'd have to make a motion to suspend the rules and then vote to suspend the rules and then vote on the motion. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. At this Mr. time, Chair. I would like to make a motion that we suspend the rules of the 30-day waiting period so that we may take action on policy C4. Okay. We have a motion on for it. I hear a second by Ms. Milner. Any questions or discussion on the motion? This is the motion to suspend the rules. There being no further discussion, we'll vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Now we can entertain a motion to approve C4 as presented. I make a motion to approve C4 as presented. Okay, Ms. Shandibles made a motion to approve C4 as presented. Uh, do I hear a second to the motion? Second. Second, Mr. <coughs> Henson. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor to approve C4? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Shepard. Now we're not going to be out of compliance. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now I'd like to recognize the chairman of our finance committee, Mr. Jim Francis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the finance committee has met and has reviewed the monthly financial reports. Everything seems to be in order uh, as presented to us. So at this time, I would like to uh, make a motion to approve the monthly financial reports as presented. Okay, we have a motion on the floor from Mr. Francis. Do I hear a second? Second. Second, Mr. Henson. Any questions or discussion on the motion? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have one more item that needs approval from the board. Okay. Um, it was brought to us um, by um, Ms. Francis um, that there is a bid out for uh, dish machine chemicals, um, and uh, she has uh, looked at a couple of companies and has decided on a, a bid. So I would like to uh, put in the form of a motion to approve the bid presented by Ms. Allison Francis for Ecolab on providing dish machine chemicals for Hayward County Schools. This would save us about $7,000, like you mentioned earlier. Okay. We have a motion on the floor to approve a contract or a bid. A bid. Okay, from Mr. Francis. Do I hear a second? Second. Second, Mr. Leatherwood. Uh, any questions or comments on the motion on the floor? I just like to say this was approved also through the finance uh, committee, so the, it was a unanimous decision from there. Any other comments before we vote? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank Anything you. else? That's all the business I have for right now. Well, thank you very much uh, for your work on the finance committee and the finance committee members. I thank you for your hard work and dedication to getting all this all these items done before the meeting this evening. Now we recognize Dr. Ann Garrett for our personnel. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, for your information, you have nine separation from employments. You have seven leave of absences. For your approval, you have 14 employments, and I pulled number 14 from that section. Okay. So for your approval, I'll do those 14 as listed. Okay. Do I hear a motion with? I'd like to make a motion to approve personnel as presented so far. Okay. We have a motion on the floor to approve the personnel. I hear a second. Second. Second, Mr. Rogers. Any uh, questions or discussion on the motion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, number 14 under employment needs to be approved. Okay. I'll so move it to we have a motion on the floor to approve uh, number 14. I hear a second. 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 Say, Mr. Francis, uh, Ms. Shandival has indicated to the chair that this is a relationship to her, so she will not be voting on this particular item uh, tonight, so she will abstain from voting. Thank you, Ms. Shandival, for bringing that to our attention. Uh, any other questions or comments on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. 
Motion carries seven with one abstention. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, you have nine employment status changes. You have one leave of absence, five substitutes, one volunteer, one employee coach, and one volunteer coaching services. I hear a motion we approve the personnel as presented thus far. So <laughs> Mr. Leatherwood has made the motion. I hear a second. Second. Second, Ms. Milner. Any questions or discussion on the motion? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, it is my pleasure to ask Mr. Dale McDonald, principal at Tuscola High School, to introduce his new assistant principal. Thank you, Dr. Garrett. Uh, I've known uh, Carol Falk for almost 20 years. We were sitting here talking about it today and realized it had been that long. And of course, <laughs> as you've seen the gray hair, you probably can see that too. But, but Carol Fox is now the lead teacher at Pisgah High School. Uh, her new duties will be my assistant principal at Tuscola High School. We are so excited. Uh, her and my lead teacher have worked closely together for the, for, since uh, Ms. Marcus has started this year. They've worked closely together, worked real well together. Uh, Ms. Fox has been in charge of testing at Pisgah High School. She's in charge of scheduling. She's in charge of curriculum. It is just a plus, plus, plus for me all the way around. Uh, and I am th so thankful to Mr. Bailey. I have had conversation with him. Uh, and, of course, we're going to let them get through their testing phase, even though I think after today she, she may change her mind, <laughs> may want to come tomorrow. Uh, but uh, we are so excited to have her, and she will start with us on February 3rd to give them a chance to get through with their testing phase. Sure. But, again, Ms. Carol Fox, our new assistant principal at Tuscarora High School. She good. Members of the board, uh, Mr. McDonald, Dr. Garrett, um, I thank you for this opportunity to be able to serve at Tuscola High School. I've had many wonderful years at Pisgah High School, um, and I'm really looking forward to a challenge and uh, to, to being able to work alongside and serve those students. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Fox. It's going to be interesting to be in your thought process when you have to wear that black and gold for the first time. Congratulations, Ms. Fox. <laughs> there being no further business, we come before the board. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>